Hi there, in this video we're going to be solving some matrix problems. Uh, first off, the matrix we're going to be dealing with, we have the first matrix A is going to be equal to 1, 0, negative 2, negative 3, 3, 1, 4, negative 1, and 1. This is the first matrix, and I'll write down the next one. Next one is B. I'll do this one in a, in a white color, I guess. So B equals 1, 0, negative 2, negative 1, 3, negative 3, 4, negative 1, and a 1. So we have two matrices here, and we're asked to do some things with them. The first thing we're asked is to find the product BA. So it's asking us to multiply B to A, not A to B, which can get people confused. So multiplying B to A, we have to take, we have to focus on the column here and the rows of this. So I've gone ahead and wrote down the particular or the respective matrices in a different order. This one here is matrix, matrix B, this one's matrix A, and now we're going to multiply them. So you're going to focus on going down the row, the first row, and then the first column of this. So what I, what I mean is basically you're going to do 1 times 1, so 1 times 1 like that, so 1 times 1, add, then it's going to be 1 times the next, or sorry, it's going to be 0. You move down 1, so 0 times, and down here, negative 3. That's going to be nothing, so I'll just put a 0 there. Then we have negative 2, multiply down here now, the 4, that's going to be negative 8. And then we just kind of simplify this, that would be 1 plus negative 8, that's negative 7. So that would be the first component of the product between B and A, so negative 7 is the first part. And I have a video on how to multiply matrices in case you've got the, the, the main purpose of this video is main is to provide you with some exercises for yourself. And I'll just solve it along with you so we can get some hints. So the next part, we focus on the next column here. One times zero is nothing. One times three is three. Then we have, or actually, sorry, one times zero is nothing. Zero times three is nothing. Negative two times negative one is just a positive two. So two would go here now. Now for the last column, 1 times negative 2 is negative 2, 0 times 1 is nothing, then we have another negative 2 right there, so this will be a negative 4, and moving down again, we have, moving down the, to the second column, because we, we finished off the first row, I mean, so negative 1, multiply that as negative 1, this will give me, I guess I should actually write this one down, there's a lot of them, so negative 1 here, 3 times negative 3 is just a negative 9. Negative 3 times 4 is negative 12. So that'll give me a negative 22 in total for that particular component, a very large number. The next part, we is this one here, negative 1 multiplied 0 is nothing. 3 times 3 is 9. This one here give you positive 3. So 9 and a positive 3 is 11. Sorry, that's 12. <laughs> so let me get rid of that little there, that little dash. Okay, so it's positive 12, negative 1 times negative 2, positive 2, then we have 3 times that, so positive 2 and a positive 3, so 5, then negative 3, that will give you a negative, or uh, negative 2 right there, or sorry, a positive 2, then for the bottom, we have 4 times 1, 4, negative 1, or negative 1 times negative 3, is a positive 3, so 4 and positive 3, 7, 1 times 4, so 7 add 4, that's 11 down here, then we have 4 times 0 is nothing, negative 1 times that negative 3, this is negative 1, so negative 4. And for the last part, it's negative 8 plus negative 1, so it'll be not negative 9, then this one, or 1 times 1, that's a 1. So negative 9 at 1 is negative 8, right there. And this would be the product for this particular matrix, or both of them. So this is equal to BA. So now for the next example, we're asked to find something else rather particular. So it's going to be 3A. We want to find th what is 3A minus B, but the transpose of B, not just regular B. So 3A minus the transpose of B. What is that? Well, first off, let's just deal with this, this term right here. Let's multiply 3 throughout the A matrix to get rid of that scalar there. So that would make it 3, 0, then 3 multiplied negative 2 is negative 6, then we get a negative 9 
positive 9. Now the 3 right there. 3 times 4, 12. Then that's negative 3. And a positive 3. So this here is 3a, the first part of what they want us to do. Now we have to find the transpose of b. So subtract the transpose of b. So to find transpose, we just take all of the rows and we convert them into columns. So the first row here, we change to a column. That'll be 1, 0, negative 2 for the first column. Now this row here becomes a column. It'll be negative 1, 3, negative 3. And lastly, 4, negative 1, and 1. And that would be the transpose of b. Now we just subtract them. And it's very simple to, to subtract matrices. You just focus on the individual components and subtract away. So 3 subtract 1, 2. 0 subtract 1, or negative 1 rather, that would be positive 1. Negative 6 subtract 4 is negative 10. Negative 9 subtract nothing, negative 9. Uh, that would be a 6. This here would be a positive, so it would be 4. 12 subtract out would make it a 14 right there. And this would give you a 0. And lastly, that would give you a 2. And this is how you do it. All you do is just subtract all of the components. It's very simple. And this would be the... the uh, sorry, I erased it there. That would be the trans... 3a multiply the transpose of b. So now we're asked another question. This one is particularly uh, interesting. It says find an elementary matrix E. So find some elementary matrix E such that when you do E times A, it's going to equal B. So E is an elementary matrix. And it's best to think of elementary matrices as basically row operations that are performed when you multiply them to a matrix. So just think of it like, so it's sort of like what row operation can we perform on A to change it into B? So let's just think about that first. Let's look at the matrices themselves. What's so different about, about them? Well, their first row is exactly the same. Their third row, third one, is also exactly the same. It's only their middle row that's different. So how can we change A into B? What can we do to, the, to its middle row? So we can multiply, because notice uh, the, the middle component here is also the same. The 3 and the 3 is the same. So you know that they didn't like subtract the third row to the second row, because that would have changed the 3. What they did was they did something with the first row and the second row right here. So how can you change the negative 3 into a negative 1? Well, you can multiply the first row by positive 2 and add it to the second row. If you did that, 2 minus 3 is just a negative, or sorry, 2 minus negative 3 is, an, uh, two minus three is a negative 1. Uh, 2 multiplied 0 is nothing, so it doesn't matter, it doesn't change the 3. And 2 multiplied this is negative 4. Negative 4 added to a positive 1 would give you negative 3, so that's where this came from. So now we know the row, the row operation that was performed. They multiplied the first row by a positive 2 and added it to the third row. So to find an elementary matrix that would have this kind of built in, you first you take the identity, just a standard identity matrix, so it looks like this, 0, 0, 1. So we have 1's going diagonally. And all you do is you perform the same operation that was that, would, that was performed on A. You multiply the first row by a positive 2 and add it to the second row. So what's this right here? Well, this would just be the first row is the same. The second row, however, would, be, would have a 2 here. Then 1, 0, 0, 0, 1. And this is an elementary matrix that should, when multiplied to A, transform it into B. It's Think of it as like a storage container for an, a bunch of row operations. You can have more than this, not just one. And so that's it for these matrix exercises. Thank you for watching.